Hey there, everyone. I wanted to do this video because I'm kind of frustrated, really frustrated, actually, with all the stuff that's going on through the media these days with the coronavirus news. And every day, it's the same keywords you hear, right? The make sure and wear your mask, the social distancing, we're all in this together, all of that crap. But you never hear about any of the facts. And that's what I wanted to figure out was, what what exactly is this? What exactly is all you hear about recently is the the number of infections in the United States. Well, what does that mean? You know, how many people are actually dying from this? How how bad is the illness in a lot of people? What age groups do they have, does that affect? Uh, so I did my own research. Uh, I'm tired of hearing all the politicians talk about this. I'm tired of the overlord Fauci talking about this. So uh, I grabbed a lot of stuff. I've been doing this for a few hours now, and I wanted to share it with you. I, I grabbed a lot of stuff from the CDC website to figure out exactly what the stats are. What I've got are some numbers that I pulled up uh, that I was I was wondering about the you know how many people are being affected by this what's the death rate uh, what are the real numbers rather than the stuff you hear on the local news and the stuff that the the mainstream media is is spouting out all the time so uh, what I did was I got these numbers from the CDC uh, and this is at the day that I did this was eight fourteen two thousand twenty so that's what these numbers reflect the information that was on that website at the time. Uh, I've got some resources that I'll leave in the description below uh, so you can fact check me if you like. Uh, but like I said, all of these numbers I got from there. So if if I'm wrong, they're wrong, basically. Uh, but the, the total U.S. population is 328 million. So the total COVID cases to date are 5,176, according to CDC. That's a 1.58% of our total population. Uh, the total COVID deaths as to date are 165,148. So basically the chances of dying from COVID once you're infected, once you actually get COVID, are about 3%, 3.19 3 is the number I came up with. And I also went through how it, it stacks up against the flu and even the Spanish flu, which I'll get into all of those in a minute. So basically, your chances of dying for, from COVID if you actually catch COVID are 3%, a little bit over 3%. Uh, now, also keep in mind with these stats that these are average stats. The mortality rate uh, is much, much, much higher for people that are over 60, 70 years old, and it's much lower for people that are really young. So keep that in mind as you're reading this, that your chance from dying from COVID if you, if you catch it is 3% for the average person. But if you're older than that, then it's much higher than that. And if you're younger than that, it's probably lower than that as well. Your chances of contracting COVID are 1.57%. Uh, this means just through your everyday life, you're, you're, the percentage of you actually getting COVID, never mind the mortality rate or anything else, just contracting it is 1.57%. Now, with all of these people walking around and all of this stuff you hear on the news, you would never know that. You would think that it's, you know, 20, 30% or 10%, you know, uh, with all the people walking around with their masks on. If you don't have a mask on, they they look at you like your, your Linus from Peanuts, right, with the blanket just got this cloud of coronavirus around you. Uh, but the actual chances of you actually getting, at this point, you actually getting it are 1.5%. Now with those, the total cases out of that 5 million that require hospitalization are about 450,000. That's about 8.79% of people that actually get the coronavirus are going to need hospitalization. Uh, that's a pretty high number. So that's really nothing to scoff at. And this video is, like I said earlier, this video is not to say this is complete made up crap. And this is, is not to say that, hey, you better watch out because we're all going to die. It's It's just showing what the stats show. So uh, the total cases that require hospitalization are about 9%. Uh, so if you get the virus, you've got about a 9% chance of having to go to the hospital. Now, this is the part which is kind of scary to me is your chance of dying if you have to go to the hospital are about 30%. So you've got about a 70% chance to live if you get this illness and it's, it's strong enough to where you need to be hospitalized for it. Uh, again, that's a lot lower in younger kids and a lot higher in older people. So keep that in mind as well. But, and all of these numbers probably have a lot to do with the precautions that have been taken. Uh, so I don't want to discount that either. Uh, but these are the numbers uh, to date. So 
Next, I wanted to figure out how these all stack up with the flu and the Spanish flu. Uh, so in 2019, there were 29 million cases of the flu. Uh, of those 29 million cases, 34,000 people actually died of the flu. So your chances of getting the flu in general is 8.84%. Uh, and that's just, you know, on a yearly basis, maybe we have about a 10% chance we're actually going to get the flu. Maybe it's just a cold. Maybe we have a few symptoms, not, not a big deal. Uh, we get through it. That's about eight, 9% chance. Uh, you compare that to your chances of getting the coronavirus, uh, that's about 3.19% chance. So uh, a little bit different there. It's, a, it's more likely that you would get the flu then you would get the coronavirus. Although you can see here that the symptoms from the coronavirus, uh, the, the mortality rate is a lot higher, which is, which is what makes it more dangerous. So uh, your chances of dying from the flu, if you're not infected, 0.1% chance. Uh, your chances of getting the flu, 8.84% chance. Your, the odds that it would require a hospital visit uh, is about 1.69%. Last year, uh, 490,000 people of the 29 million infected uh, required a hospital visit, whether that be, you know, just getting an aspirin or getting a checkup or just making sure it doesn't mean it was, um, you know, life threatening or anything, but they, it, it required them to go to the hospital. So about one point one to two percent of the people needed to go to the hospital uh, for flu symptoms. Now, your chances of dying from the flu once you're infected is about 0.92%. So there's a 1% chance uh, that you could die from the flu. And again, average numbers, uh, children, the, the flu affects children a lot more than the coronavirus does. Uh, elderly people, uh, it affects elderly people a lot more uh, than your you know, middle-aged people. So uh, those stats to me, what it tells me is that, you know, that the coronavirus is nothing to scoff at. And I don't mean to make it seem like that right now. But when it comes to all the stuff you hear on TV, I don't know that it's worth shutting down our country uh, for the coronavirus, that you've got people that are losing jobs, you've got businesses that are closing, you've got people that can't afford to pay rent, you've got kids that live in abusive homes that have to stay there because the schools are closed, even though the stats show that uh, you know, this doesn't affect kids all as much as it does the really elderly. A lot of these stats are a little bit skewed, too, because of the very beginning of this. And New York did such a terrible job. Uh, a lot of people in nursing homes died. And that kind of raised the stats a little bit. So uh, to me, it just seems like kind of a, a step too far to be shutting down the country on a, on an, with an economy that's already shaky. And now we're doing this and the government's just doling out money. I guess it can because it prints it. Uh, even if you're not talking about a federal level, look at the state levels. You know, these, the, the state economies, they actually have to, you know, kind of budget a little bit. Uh, how are they going to be with this loss of revenue? Not just the people that can't afford to pay their rent and all that stuff. So to me, it seems a little bit, you know, a little bit overboard as far as what I think we need to do. I mean, there's got to be some equal ground here. I understand the safety precautions and stuff like that. If you look back at this with the flu, you know, if we did the same things with the flu, uh, that, that chances of getting the flu would probably be a whole lot less than that eight for that 9% there. You know, it, it, it just seems to me that it's this knee jerk reaction where everybody hears this stuff going on in the mainstream media on the news and they just, they completely freak out and they don't bother getting the whole facts. I'll leave this uh, in the description below uh, and some of these stats so you can check them out yourself. I know I kind of went through these real quick. Uh, I've heard a few stories, different stories about the, the Spanish flu and how it correlates with the coronavirus and all of that. And I kind of want to bring some of these numbers just so you can get an idea of, of what I found out anyway. Uh, the total population back then, and this virus went on for two years, so you've got to extrapolate some of these numbers out, but the total population that in, back then was about 105 million, uh, give or take. The total cases, and this was, was an estimate from CDC because they're, you know, the reporting back then wasn't what it is now, and there's some people that say that the total cases were a lot more than they than they were, or the total deaths were a lot more than were actually reported. So uh, I just used the lowest number and, and you can make up your mind from there. But 
The total cases were estimated to be about 34 million. That's a third of the population. And this was the global population. I couldn't find the numbers for the US population, but I'm assuming it was right in that range anyway. So I went with that number. Uh, so 32% of the population. Now, deaths from the Spanish flu, and again, this is estimated. Some people say it's a lot higher than this. Some pe people say it's, it, this is about the number. I, I didn't see anything that they said it was lower than this. So, uh, But deaths from the Spanish flu were about 675,000. And to put into context, that would be about 2 million of today's population. I don't see, even though it's only been eight months or so, uh, and our total death rate from the COVID is from COVID is 165,000. I don't see how we could even come close to that, that 2 million. Even if, you, even if you did this with the current population and extrapolated this out to you know, a two year span, you're still, you're still talking about you know, less than a million people, uh, far less than a million people. So uh, the Spanish flu was, was far more deadly than the, the coronavirus. Uh, the chances of dying from it, if you were infected, though, were about 1.98%. Now, that is less than the 3% from the coronavirus. So the coronavirus has a higher mortality rate. But when you think about how the Spanish flu uh, was more infectious and how many people that infected, uh, it was a lot more people. So this is not, you know, this is not the Spanish flu. And I haven't heard a lot of people uh, talking about how I haven't heard anybody really talking about how this is worse than the Spanish flu. Uh, but context to me is the good thing. You hear the same old dribble on these news channels every day. Uh, and it's about how we're all going to die and you put your mask on or you're killing people and stuff like that. And again, I'm not saying that I'm not an anti-masker and, and at the same time, I'm not a masked Nazi either. Uh, I think all of these precautions uh, are you know, probably good for the situation, but I doesn't think it necessitates uh, people losing their businesses. C children have to stay home, children having to stay home with abusive parents, uh, the domestic violence and stuff like that that goes on, which is made even worse now because people are stuck at home together. So uh, that's, that's my whole thing with this video. I just wanted to, to throw some numbers out, give you guys some numbers to look at, to get a better understanding of this stuff about why you know, it's, yes, it is, it is important. It is important to do all of this stuff, but is, does it necessitate, uh, you know, closing down the country and destroying our economy and all of this stuff that, you know, we're going to see the re residual effects of uh, a year or two from now when all of this has kind of run its course and then we're left to pick up the pieces. Uh, local governments, you know, the, the federal government, all of this different stuff. How many different restaurants have, and businesses have gone out of business and people's livelihoods taken away, uh, people getting evicted from homes, all of that stuff that's going to happen because uh, everybody is so freaked out right now. Uh, this, this virus affects older people more uh, than anyone else in the population. So uh, it would be, you know, something where, yes, you, you know, if you do get the virus, then you stay away from the, you know, your grandparents and your, or your parents and stuff like that. Uh, just do what you can. But at the same time, there's, there's got to be uh, something that it's in the middle rather than the extreme one end or the other. Uh, anyway, if you guys have any comments on this, I just wanted to throw these numbers out there and, and get your thoughts. If you guys have any comments on this, uh, leave them below. Uh, and I'll also be talking about this with Brian in the, in the upcoming Duff and Dale podcast we'll be doing uh, coming up this week. Uh, so with that, we'll talk to everyone later. Make sure and subscribe if you're not subscribed and uh, we'll talk to you all later.